In this lecture, we're going to add an input form to our joke application so the user can add their own jokes to the list. By the end of this lecture, you're going to learn how to emit custom output events from components. And you're also going to learn how to create local variables in templates. So we could add a form in our joke list component, just, just add a form with all the form elements underneath it. It would definitely be easier to set up since all the code for our input form would be contained in the same component. However, we are going to create a new component to support the input form. Perhaps we want to reuse this form in other places in our application, or perhaps we want this functionality in one component so it's easier to test in isolation later on. This form is going to render a bootstrap, a Twitter bootstrap form on the page with two fields, setup and punchline, and also a create button. But when architecting an Angular application, I often find it helps to first think about how your component is going to be used rather than how you're going to build it or what it's going to contain. So I believe our form component is best placed in the joke list component template, like so. I also believe it's going to emit an output event. So a few things to know. I, I think the components tag, its selector should be joke-form. And also I believe the component should have an output event, an output event called joke created. And whenever a user has added a joke, I want it to emit an event on this joke created event. So just as a quick note, we're treating the component as a black box. We don't care how the component is implemented or how the user interacts with it. The parent component, the host component, just wants to know when the user has created a new joke. So when the joke created event is emitted, I want to call the function add joke. And we'll go through what this dollar sign event means later on. So this syntax describes the behavior we expect from our joke form component. Now let's go away and create it. So we're gonna call it joke form component and we're gonna annotate it with a component decorator. And I'm also just gonna paste in the Twitter bootstrap form that we're going to be using. Now we're still gonna be using the card Twitter bootstrap style. It's got a title of create joke. And then we've got one input control, which is the setup and another input control, which is the punchline. And then finally a button with the text create. Now, before we use the joke form component, we need to add it to the declarations on the NG module. So if we scroll to the bottom, Let's just add it to the declarations there. So, so far, this component would just render a form on the page. If I click run, there you go, it's showing the form on the page, but when you click create, nothing really happens. From the outside, all we really care about this component is that it makes available an output event binding called joke created. So to create a custom output event on our component, we need to do two things. And go back up to the joke form component. So I need to create a new property called joke created. And this joke created property will be an instance of something called an event emitter. Now an event emitter is a helper class which we can use to emit events when something happens. Other components can then bind and react to those events. Now to use event emitter, we need to import it. So let's scroll to the top and we import it from Angular Core. And the second thing we need to do is to decorate that property with an output decorator. So again, we need to import it. And again, it comes from Angular Core. And then we scroll down to our property. 
and I'm going to decorate it with output. So we have now created an output event property on our component called joke created. Now the thing, the name in between the angle brackets on our event emitter class here, this is the type of thing that will be output by this event emitter. Now this syntax, the syntax with the angle brackets, this is called a generic and we'll cover this in much more detail in the section on TypeScript. And again, what this means is when the joke created event fires an event, we are going to pass an instance of a joke. So to support that, let's create a function called create joke and have it actually output an event. So we output an event by calling the emit function on our joke created property. And whatever we pass to the emit function is what will be output by the property. And we're outputting an instance of a joke with just some dummy, dummy joke data. So the next thing we need to do is to make sure we call the create joke function when the user presses the create button. So to do that, we bind to the output click event from the button. And when that gets emitted, we call our create joke function. And also, although I've written up how our joke form component is going to be consumed in our joke list component, we actually need to implement the add joke function. So if I scroll to the bottom of my component here, our add joke function is just going to push. That's what unshift does. It pushes a, an item onto the front of the array. So not onto the back of the array, which is what push does. Unshift pushes it onto the front of the array. And the key thing here is that we're being passed the joke. So breaking it all down, this line here, we're binding to the joke created output event property. When that gets emitted, the add joke function is called and the dollar sign event is a special variable and holds whatever was emitted by the joke created event emitter. And in our case, it's going to be an instance of a joke, which is why we can be certain in the add joke function, we are actually being passed an instance of a joke. And then Angular automatically detects that the jokes array has changed and then updates the view so it shows the new joke. So now if I rerun the application, I click create and you can see the joke is added to the front of the array and is shown in our application. Okay, so now we've got the mechanism we're going to use to send events from our custom form control. How do we actually get the values from the input fields? I mean, right now we're just sending dummy values a setup, a punchline. I actually want to be able to enter a setup and enter a punchline, click create and have that uh, emitted out. Now, one way we can solve this problem in Angular is to use something called a template reference variable. So I'm going to go back up into my joke form component. And at the end of the input control for the setup, I'm going to type dollar or hash setup. So what this dollar sign syntax is, this is a template reference variable. And this tells Angular to bind this input control to the variable setup. Now that's the default behavior of template reference variables. Later on in this course, especially in this section on forms, I'm going to explain to you how template reference variables can be used to bind to different things. But by default, if you don't provide any other parameters, this is just going to bind to whatever the element it's attached to. And the other important thing to note is that although this creates a variable called setup, which holds the input, this is only visible by default from within our template code. The variable setup will not be visible from our joke form component here. Okay, so now that setup points to a DOM input element, how do we actually get the value of the input element? And we do that 
by calling setup.value. So in our create joke function, if I just did setup.value, that will pass to the create joke function, whatever we've entered into the input field for the setup. And we can do exactly the same for our punchline field. punchline.value. And finally, we change the create joke function so it accepts these new arguments and uses them to construct an instance of a joke. So let's change our create joke function so it accepts these new arguments. It's going to accept a setup, which is of type string, and a punchline, which is again of type string. And then we just pass that setup to the joke and again the punchline here. So now if I rerun the application, I type something into setup, punchline, and then I click create. And then here we go. Here's the actual joke that we've entered in the create joke form being emitted and uh, added to the joke list. So to summarize, similar to input properties, we can also create output event properties on our custom components using the output decorator. Now these output properties are always instances of the event emitter class and we can output events by calling the emit function. Whatever we pass to the emit function is output as the dollar sign event template variable. And we can also create local template variables by adding variables starting with the hash or pound character on any element in our template. And by default, that variable, that template reference variable is only visible in the template that it's declared in and points to the DOM element it's attached to. So now you should congratulate yourself. You've built your very first Angular 2 application.